Hey guys, I'm Rich from Neowin, and today we're taking a look at this stuff. And yes, you can see it's a bit of a mess because um, I just finished recording two videos. And like I said in the last one, I usually change my shirt between videos to make it look like I'm not um, recording videos back to back. But that's not the case today because this, this is part of a big series. So like I've said, a um, little recap, Intel sent me the... 13 inch MacBook Pro with Apple's M1 processor. Intel sent me a Razorbook 13 with 11th gen Intel processors. And they sent me all of these goodies over here, which include uh, Razor uh, GPU enclosure, uh, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Uh, they sent me uh, this SS, the Samsung SSD here that's got a fingerprint sensor on it. Um, and so, so the whole idea is to test uh, compatibility and, you know, the, to focus on the, um, the Windows ecosystem a lot. So, like, and what, one of the things I noted that I've noted many times before when I've reviewed 11th gen processors is that, that um, it's with Intel's renewed focus on integrated graphics, it's shocking how much power you can get out of something in such a small footprint. So if we look and we compare these things, right? The footprint is smaller, right? These the the MacBook is quite a bit taller here, even though the Razer Book has a 16 by 10 display. Um, the bezels are much larger on the MacBook. I could just use Touch ID, which is actually cool. Um, and then with uh, with the razor book we have facial recognition so these <laughs> these things work but anyway just look at these two and just look at the difference in bezels between the two i am shocked i am shocked that that apple didn't redesign its its macbook pro in order to take advantage of the new architecture because ARM processors, ARM processors are supposed to be more efficient. They're supposed to be fanless. They are, the, the Pro has a fan, I assume, just to get a little boost of performance over the air, which is the same processor now. But this is all supposed to, um, it's supposed to result in a thinner and lighter PC with no fan and stuff like that. And Apple's just stuck in the same chassis uh, and they're focusing on performance instead of the value propositions that uh, Qualcomm's been pushing in its Windows PCs. So so I'm just a little surprised that they... The same thing, the Air is in the exact same chassis too. They might change it up next year. But they're focusing on performance instead. And, um, you know, like, so performance is going to be one of those things we test in, in various categories, right? So we're going to open up this uh, GPU here. Like, we're, I, I want to start setting this stuff up. This is the uh, NVIDIA... GeForce RTX 20 Ti, and um, look at that. That is pretty. <laughs> uh, anything else in here? Oh, this is kind of heavy. Oh, there's there's cables in here, which is what kind of cable is this? This is a Display port. Oh Okay, so there's an adapter here. So that's that's interesting. Wow. I did not know that <laughs> That's a thing that, that comes with this stuff. But uh, cool, I guess. I'm not going to be using that because I'll just use DisplayPort cables. They did send me that USB-C to uh, DisplayPort adapter in case I need that, which that might come in handy more than that will. So, um, yeah, there's that. Now, let's open up well, Let's open up this, uh, this uh, GPU enclosure here, and let's take a look. All right, so this comes right out. Right, so that's, that's actually pretty cool the way that Razer designed this here. There's a thumb screw right here. Oops. Okay, so this comes out. And this goes in. And... Screw that in, okay? And then we have a power supply over here. Um, and so we have... Just need to connect our... Cable management's a little tight on here <laughs> to get it uh, to get it working with that. This pin fits under here, and that'll go in there. This one fits right under there. 
because you got to combine the six and the two pins. Obviously, you you need two eight pin connectors for an, for uh, an RTX 2080 Ti. Um, so that's all set, and we can. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna tie up these cables first before I put it back in there. All right, now see see how easy that is to set up. That just slides. Whoops! <laughs> you gotta. It doesn't just slide back. All right, I think we're all right. We're in. Wait. You have to. There's a handle on the back here, where you actually have to um, have this open like that in order to pull this out, and it won't close unless it's unless it's open either. Now, if we look at the back here, we can see we have our USB uh, Type C well Thunderbolt port over here. That's going to connect to the PC. We have a power port right here, and we have a switch. Um, I, honestly, I am kind of surprised at just how easy it is to just pop a GPU in there. Unless I did something wrong, of course, in which case I will connect this to the PC and it won't work. But we're about to try that. It actually comes with a pretty small USB Type-C cable, so I'm going to pull this sticker off of here as well. And now, so that's connected, right? And we'll just sit that right on top there. It's connected, and I'm about to flip the switch, and we'll see if it works. All right, you can see that the fans are firing up in here. You heard the the little little noise. That means something is connected to it. So, um, yeah, it's it should be working. So now what I can do is I can connect um, external displays to this. Um, so we've got this set up, and that's that's really what what this is about. Was just kind of getting that set up, getting it plugged in, and. You know, because then I can play around with it and do do other t test out other things later. Um, one thing that's that's nice about this Samsung SSD, by the way, two terabyte SSD. It's not a small SSD. Um, they sent they sent they sent both Type A and Type C cables. Not many companies do that. Either you get a Type C to a Type C, or you get a um, you get you get a Type A um, a Type A to Type C. You never get both. Uh, I'll use the Type A one for now, just because. Just because it's on this side, you know. Um, so we connect that. You can see that the fingerprint sensor lights up, and now we should be able to um, play around with that. And there should, there, I'm sure, there's some third-party software that I can use to set up the fingerprint sensor on it. Uh, and as you would expect, that software is loaded onto the SSD. What a perfect place to put it. That makes a lot of sense. Are you a resident of a European country? No, I am not. Um, so yeah, so we have security mode on, security with password, and security with password and fingerprint. Okay, so I assume that if I if I plug this into the Mac, perhaps it would just make me use the password uh, instead of giving me a fingerprint. All right, and I set up the fingerprint through that. That's pretty simple. Uh, but you can do you can do password, password and fingerprint, or no security at all. Um, so we're just gonna. Take this out for now. now let's just take a quick look. I'm just a little curious. Here comes that USB-C port. I'm just a little curious what happens if I plug it into this, if I can access anything, because now that it has the uh, the password and such on it. Um, I'm going to play around with it a little bit, um, because there is a Mac app that you can install as well. So we'll just kind of see what works uh, and what doesn't. But yeah, for now, it did not seem to work, okay? <laughs> Obviously, the GPU is not going to work. We know that's not going to work. But uh, yeah, like I said, I can use this to connect displays. All right, guys, that's it for now. Um, I've sp probably spent a lot more time in this video off camera trying, kind of trying to get things together. Um, but this is, like I said, this is, this is a, the third video in kind of a series. Just, just trying to get this this project started where we're looking at the MacBook Pro and the Windows ecosystem and what worked with each other, what doesn't, what you can do, what you can't do, stuff like that. Um, you know, like I said, this was so easy to set up, right? I just popped a GPU in there, plugged it in, and boom, we're, we're in. You know, so that... that just works and you know what if i plug this into the macbook pro that's not going to work um this i'm going to play around with to see what i can get to work what i can't get to work you know stuff like that um but 
I'm excited about this project because I, I usually just do product reviews. So, you know, someone sends me a product, I play with it for a couple of weeks and I use it as a primary device and then I write a review and then it gets sent back and I move on to the next thing. So like this is something that's a little more uh, in depth, trying out different things and cool stuff like that. So now this video was mostly about just, um, you know, getting, you know, almost like unboxing the, uh, peripherals that Intel sent along with this stuff and and kind of just plugging them in seeing what happens stuff like that next um, we're gonna uh, you're gonna see some written content it's gonna be uh, app compatibility hardware compatibility performance and then product reviews so stay tuned guys um, this is probably gonna be uh, go on for a couple months so you know stay tuned and check it all out I'm Richard Neowin have a great night